world, eager to learn, but the computers are not enough. On opening of this institution, we wanted to buy a computer. Not only one, we wanted to have like five computers, but it was quite expensive to get one. Really, really expensive. Mm -hmm. And it's a similar situation in many schools across the country. But to address this problem, a local mechanical engineer has designed an affordable microfuse computer. The microfuse stick computer is uh, a, a low power device. Uh, it's in form of a, a, a stick, the way you see a U USB stick. Actually, most people mistake it to be a USB uh, flash disk, but uh, it is your systems unit or the one they call the CPU uh, condensed down. Microfuse stick computer is a portable device that can be plugged into any screen for work, learning or entertainment purposes. This computer device costs about 99 US dollars compared to a desktop computer which goes for more than 400 US dollars. Developers are now planning to manufacture more microfuse devices to help improve computer literacy in Uganda. And they are making it much easier to access. We are working with partners to ensure people uh, and students and parents can buy our technology in installments. So there's that affordable financing option. Karugaba has so far produced 100 units of microfuse stick computers for the local market. While the design is made here, Karugaba has partnered with Chinese companies abroad to manufacture the computer devices. To boost his efforts, the United Nations Children's Fund has also launched a digital learning program for over 200,000 marginalized children in Uganda. The hope is that these and many other interventions could help close the computer literacy gap in Uganda. So guys, welcome back to another episode of the Washington SXM podcast. If you like this content, you know what it is. Tell a friend, tell a friend, like, share, and subscribe. So let's get into this video, quick and fast. So you see where this inventor, Ivan, um, invented the microfuse computer. This is a feel-good moment for me because I didn't even know they had such a mini um, microcomputer system that can work as a desktop. Uh, this is new to me. But it's a brilliant invention by Ivan, the inventor, African, from Uganda. And the teacher, this all started from the teacher where he wanted his kids to become computer literacy. Right? So, schools all over Africa don't have computer rooms like how you have it in the, in the States, for example, or in Europe, but they are so expensive. Those things cost thousands of dollars to get a good desktop computer. It's not cheap. It's very expensive. But this microfuse computer costs $100. So you know how much kids are not going to have access to become computer literate and to have the skills to, when they grow up, to help the country to get jobs and to have even these kids can grow up to become inventors themselves by just being who know they can become code writers just like the the, the um ivan the the engineer so and it's so easy to use it all i need is a um the the usb cable plug it up to the tv to any tv and plug it up and boom you have computer and this is how many of you knew of this invention? Because you know it's things, things like these are hidden in the media, the well the media networks. They won't show anything positive when it comes around to Africa. There's always negativity. They are they push. They, they are always showing demonstrations or coups or hungry people or they are using the same video with the with, with, with African kids with big heads and big bellies and, and all of a fly. Somewhere in the video, all of the all of flies. And this is what they, they paint Africa as, an undeveloped, uneducated, uncivilized people. But they're not showing these beautiful cities and these beautiful infrastructure that this, the continent has. I don't know why they're trying to paint Africa like that, because they're trying to keep Africa on a level where they don't want, don't want to go and visit to see Africa for themselves. So anyway, back to the story. So now these kids will have access to computer learning. So who knows, some of these kids might become code writers, inventors themselves, who knows, who knows what they can invent in the future because of what? They started from young, learning how to use a computer. And that's where it starts, right? So, and who manufacture these, the parts for this microfish computer? The Chinese. 
So you see, the Chinese, the Chinese is always there, not only to look out for themselves and what they want, but they also give the continent um, aid, as in, let me say aid, I mean, engineer aids and manufacturing aid in developing the country so the economy can grow and help young people to grow as well because they post in they install electrical grids water dams um train lines grids for um for, for electricity to make for electricity grids for um for oil processing for for water pump water pump stations so for this is what i like about the chinese Yes, they want resources because the Chinese are not doing all this for free. So no one is thinking they're coming there to help and not getting anything in return. Yes, they want resources, but they're actually putting in infrastructure to help the continent and helping with building and educating kids. And I hear some people saying they, um, the Chinese putting in con contracts that they have the kids have to learn Mandarin. And I hear some people complaining about that. But to me, that makes perfect sense because in Ghana recently, well, not recently, they, 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 they designed a factory uh, um, for oil to process it in Ghana and the Ghanaian, Ghana government end up fire all the Chinese engineers but the Chinese engineer had put everything in Mandarin so the Ghanaian engineers had to go and learn Mandarin to take over the factory which they didn't know they're, they are saving 36 million annually by just firing a few engineers and put the Ghana engineers in. So it's now fully run by Ghana, this the, the station. So that's what I like because if kids learn Mandarin from young and they master the language, then they can sign better deals because they can get tricked by the, 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 the contracts that the Chinese bring because they can read and understand it fully. And they can run anything they design because the train line that they the train system that they this is designed recently in Kenya um where it runs from Kenya to China to the Horn of Africa, Uganda, Rwanda, South Sudan and all those places. All these trains were designed by the Chinese. So everything is is in the in Mandarin. The the manuals, the the um all the instructions, everything is in Mandarin. But again, Kenya sent the eight females to go and learn the language and then learn how to be conductors on these trains and now they're taking over the train and they are the conductors and they speak the language so if you teach these kids from young the language is very good for them to grow up knowing the language so they can master the language and master anything the chinese do and they can take it over so it's a good look it's a win-win situation for me so stop complaining why the chinese want to learn want the, 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 the locals to learn the language. It's a good thing for me. The more language you know, the better it is for you. Anyway, so, anyway, I can ask you a little from the, from the topic, but it's a good look. Now the kids gonna have computer. They don't have to be bungled up and have four, uh, you see the whole class was around one computer. Now you can have five, six computers in the class and you can have a groups of two or groups of three. So they can have better access, more time to the tenure of the Russian. And, and you see, as you can see, because they surround, they, because of the kids surrounding the teacher, that means they are very interested in learning. So that's also a plus. They are trying to learn. They, they, kids are naturally inquisitive. So that's good. So anyway, thanks for watching. As always, I don't know. Leave a comment in the comment section. Let me know what you think about this, about this invention and the purpose, the purpose of it and how we can help the continent in the future. So. Thanks for watching. You don't know. This is Washington SXM Podcast. Peace. One love. Boom.